As I'm sure many of you on this channel know, Microsoft is done with the Surface Duo. But that doesn't mean that the Surface Duo is done, period. There remains some work being done in the developer community. And today in this video, we're going to be taking a look at something very interesting. Surface Duo Dual Experience. This is a ROM that is on GitHub. ArchFX, I believe, is the developer who is uh, creating this ROM. We're going to go through the instructions. You're going to basically see me try to install it. Hopefully this all goes well. And then we're going to take a look at it. We are bringing Android 15 to Microsoft's Surface Duo, even if Microsoft won't do it themselves. So there are a couple of prerequisites that you should already have figured out before you are going to attempt to do this. You need to know how to use ADB, you need to have it on your computer, and you need to have your Surface Duo's bootloader unlocked. Now I have covered these things so many times on this channel that if I'm being honest, I just don't have it in me to cover them again, to kind of retread that tire one more time. So I'm just going to skip over this and assume that by now you know about these things. Hopefully you do. Link in the description to this GitHub page. This is our release. We're going to click on this and we should have a download link here. This one has G apps. So that is the one that we want because we do want to have the Google application. So we are now downloading that, which means we should be able to jump over to my downloads folder and extract this. So there is our file. We're going to right click it and I'm going to use WinRAR to extract this file. This may take a moment. So now I have my image file and I'm going to go ahead and cut and then paste that into my ADB folder. It's just going to make this a whole lot easier. And I'm also going to rename it a15.img. This will also just make things easier in the future. So the first command that we are meant to run looks like reboot into fast boot. So once you run this on your Surface Duo, you probably heard that it should reboot and go into the fast boot screen. And you can see that we are on that screen now. So for this next part, just be careful, take it slow, be smart about this. You're going to run each line one at a time. And then when you get to this part here, these are not things you run. These are just like descriptors of what you're doing. Run this next line and it's going to tell you what slot is active. If it says it's A, then you're going to run this command. If it says it's B, you're going to run this command. Then you're going to run this command. And if you did like I did and you named your image file a15.img, you're just going to replace this bit with the name of that file. It should install and then you can do your fast boot reboot. Now, I did actually run into a small problem, but I looked around in their discussion and I found someone with the exact same problem. When I went to run that last flashing command, I got an error that said something like this, not enough space to resize partition. And luckily, ArchFX had given this answer here. So I went through and I ran each of these commands and then I did my flash again. And as you can see here, everything is now working. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do my fast boot reboot. And hopefully when this thing wakes back up, I will be looking at this brand new lovely ROM. There's a familiar looking screen. I've seen that one before. So rather than try again, I'm just going to click the power button to factory reset. And we'll see if this time we get into our new operating system. All right, that took a really like weirdly long time. But as you can see, we are looking at a startup screen that looks very similar to a Pixel device. So I don't think that much of this is going to be particularly interesting, but we'll go through it anyways, just so that you can kind of see how this is going to work. And the first thing you're gonna notice here is that we have a hinge down the middle. This thinks it's a tablet, basically thinks it's a Pixel Fold or something, a Pixel tablet. So you are gonna lose some stuff in the middle. For instance, these two keys are, are basically gone. So a split keyboard would definitely be a good way to go. And since this device thinks that it's basically a Pixel device, what better a way to go than to plug it into my Pixel 9 Pro Fold and copy my data directly over from that. And as you can see, seems like it's gonna work just fine. So this is sort of an odd situation. It thinks that the sensor is in the screen, but it isn't. But whenever I actually touch this, it's vibrating. It's not giving any sort of like indication that it's like progressing, but it is progressing, I hope. 
there you go it absolutely is working so the interface is not functional it's not there this is actually something that uh, I discussed with Ted on the phones show chat podcast which is actually live they warned me about that so that's interesting but the fingerprint scanner does work we're not going to worry about face unlock for now all right there we are we are now at our home screen we're going to go ahead and unplug from my pixel 9 pro fold and take a look at what we have here so the first thing that i kind of want to check out let's just open up a random application that's interesting oh look at that they've made the app drawer be on one side or another. That is interesting. We'll just jump into settings. And as you can see, that does go across the entire screen. We have the uh, pixel fold style task bar, but you can also, you should be able to always show that. So now it is pinned down there at the bottom, the task bar that we never got on the pixel fold. And in dual panel apps like this, Everything looks pretty good. What happens if I fold it back around? Look at that. It flows over. It understands the posture. If I flip it, does it switch screens? It does. They have got a lot of stuff working here. This is very, very cool. Swipe up and hold. There you go. I just noticed up here at the top, PHH treble settings, and we have under surface duo settings, disable the hinge gap. So basically, that should put it back to how it was by default on Surface Duo, where you're no longer losing content behind the hinge. All right, so in the interest of this just looking good for you to watch, rather than pointing the camera at this reflective screen, we're going to do a screen capture. Keep in mind, there is a hinge here. You're not going to see it in the screen capture, but the hinge is still here on the device. Now, I want you to kind of notice a couple of things. If I open up Chrome, it's going to open up across the entire screen with the hinge right down the middle. But the beautiful thing about this is that you can split screen. So I'm gonna grab the Play Store and just like on my Pixel 9 Pro Fold, I can drag that around and I can drop it. And what's really cool here is that the shape of the screen, it works really well. That hinge is blocking the little handle that lets you resize but it looks aesthetically pretty good. And I bet if I touch in the hinge area, yeah, I can still do the resizing thing. I just kind of have to know that that is there. Now, here's a really cool thing that I think is worth pointing out too. Let's jump into our home settings. And if you scroll down, you can see tablet mode, floating windows, enable desktop mode in book and slate postures. And then below that, enable desktop mode in tent, ramp and brochure postures. So this is basically going to enable floating windows dependent upon the posture. Now, it is important to keep in mind that you are going to need to go into system and then developer options, and you're going to need to scroll all the way down here, and you're looking for these three options. The three that are turned on right now have to be turned on for, this, for those settings to function. Let's turn on this one. So in theory... If I launch an app now, it should launch it in a floating window. Am I right? Trying to launch Chrome and nothing's happening. So let me swipe up and hold and let me just close out of everything. And let's try Chrome again. There you go. We are now in a floating window and I can drag it back and forth. I can resize it. That is actually really interesting. So it makes this device function Kind of like this odd little desktop tablet. I don't know how useful that really is going to be, but it's there. So we do have a camera and it is somewhat functional. Let's take a photo and see if we get a photo that's all stretched out. There you go. So the preview's really, really messed up, but the photo itself looks okay. If I go into the phone posture, it's going to really be weird when it comes to uh, my capture here, but that looks much better. So using it to take selfies might be a little bit weird. Put it in a phone posture, put it in a phone posture, and that's probably going to be okay. Of course, on your home screen, you have your wallpaper and style section that should look basically identical to how it looks on the Pixel Fold. You have your widget selection, which also looks identical to how it looks on the Pixel Fold. This is very, very much that experience. Now, one thing that's interesting, Trying to save an app pair doesn't seem to be functional. Maybe this is a bug. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I've got these two applications side by side. I should be able to save a pair, but I have a quick flash 
And best I can tell, it's saying that something has stopped responding. Sometimes I see a pop-up, sometimes I don't, but something's definitely not quite functional there. Now, here's an interesting thing here. This does not look like the Pixel Fold. Maybe this is how it looks on the Pixel tablet. Not sure. This is Google Photos, and you have your sort of your settings, the things you're using to adjust the photo over on your right side. I'm actually in the way of this. My camera's in the way. But Magic Editor is actually up there as well, which is cool. That shouldn't be surprising. Magic Editor should be on every device, but it's here too. Something that I noticed after I finished filming, I'll just toss this into the video somewhere. Your home screen layouts are very, very odd. So I got this one kind of set up, but watch what happens whenever I open the device. Things sort of reef. Okay, things sort of reflow. Like you get an extra spot for an icon down here, but also the widgets just like change place. And when I close it, they go back. So it might be hard to get a layout together that you like. So guys, obviously this isn't like a full review, but I will say that I am quite impressed with how polished this ROM actually is. Dare I say, this is usable. This is actually not half bad. So guys, Android 15 on the Surface Duo. Link in the description down below. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.